you can trust John. Really? There we go. Okay. Yeah. Welcome everybody to episode uh, number five up of Operations Unplugged. Um, before we get started, I think John, you wants to tell a story. <laughs> I, just had a fun, I just had a funny story about a t-shirt, but I'm just wondering now whether it's actually very funny. So I mean, <laughs> maybe no punchline. Um, no, I mean we we did this uh, collaboration with it. It was Silicon Graphics and SGI. Yeah. yeah, and that's the correct spelling, as it turns out. So the, the yes. correct spelling of this is on this t-shirt. Um, but we did a video with SAP, and it got uploaded by by SAP's PR department to YouTube, um, unleashing lightning with an E in the middle. <laughs> now, um, yes, as in lightning the load, as opposed to lightning Zeus. No, no, unleashing. No. Oh, unleashing. No, no, you see, neither of you have got it. This is the problem with <laughs> well, the jokes. Didn't either. jokes. So, so lightning with an E is, yeah. is uh, um, that process of, of pregnancy yeah, when... Yes. I've just got it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's I did not get it, but I'm know, kind, I, of, I I'm kind of okay it. with the fact that I didn't <laughs> get it, so that's okay. It, it, it's, it's, it needs to not have an E. Um, <laughs> we, we, we corrected it quite quickly, but it was, it was, it was briefly funny. Anyway, good, good, good times. Yeah. Excellent. Well, uh, uh, before we go any further, we should probably say welcome, Chris, and thanks for joining us. Thank um, you for having me. Uh, Chris Kernahan at Bobo, Bobo on Twitter for those who tweet. Bobo. 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 I, ne I never got that. <laughs> well played. Oh. What, how would you describe a Chris? <laughs> Boo boo. Boo boo. Oh, there we go. Yes. You didn't know it was supposed to be boo-boo. I thought that you were just trying to be cruel, Brent. I was being cruel. I was just, you know. He was. <laughs> Remind me why I'm here. Yeah. It, it, it remains a mystery why you agreed to this. You know, DJ uh, suffered last week, so you're going to suffer this week. So, you know, that's just the way it goes. That's all right. Just, Don't worry. Right. Awesome. So welcome, Chris, and thanks for joining us. Um why don't we start off because we have a couple of things in the rundown but why don't we start off by let's let's talk about what's keeping you busy at the moment chris oh <clears throat> so the, um as you know uh i changed rules so i moved uh, away from my tree and joined uh atos or atos as, uh, in the us and i'm working in their tcp task force uh working with the google alliance and at the moment, uh, it's basically uh, building and expanding their platform and services around deploying SAP on GCP. Okay, so that's that's keeping me busy day job. Obviously, uh, parenting in COVID times <laughs> is a lot of fun. Uh, so I've got three, you know, six-year-old and two, you know, set of twins. Actually, for John, um, for John's benefit, we did have a, a, an incident a few minutes ago where we were prepping this, and next thing. All hell erupted behind him, and suddenly there was a, there was yes. a fall over. There was a there was a, a so I, Matthew Matthew slashed his foot because he was riding his bicycle without his shoes on. He had his helmet on, but he didn't have his shoes on, and he caught his foot. So he, there was blood everywhere. Uh, but uh, you know, it's uh, it has been very interesting because you know my my six year old is is in you know P two. I think that's uh, second grade in mm. the US or whatever and so she has school work to do and the twins ha aren't in school so they don't have school work to do so the challenge of making sure that one does school work while the other two run around like lunatics is an interesting one and then I've been doing some work with the uh, DevOps Enterprise Forum this week as well uh, the forum is usually held in Portland Oregon um, obviously people can't travel so We've been doing it remotely. Uh, I've taken a step out from some of the sessions that are running at the moment. So my team has been working on um, the intersection of DevOps and ERP, um, and I've got you know some great great people working on the on the team that I'm part of the, uh, their team. And uh, but Friday is an education day, so I've taken a step out from the education sessions to do this with you two. Were, were there any interesting insights coming out of those couple of days uh, around the around the intersection between DevOps yeah. and ERP? So the, the we're doing it under Chatham House rules, but um, but the the people that are actually on the team, so we've got 
um, two people from uh, from a footwear manu global footwear manufacturer. So their customer. I'm obviously coming at it from ATOS from a, 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 an SI point of view. And then there are two other people who are more, they they're, don't come from the SAP ecosystem, but they come from a, a, a very agile based ecosystem. So they're really challenging on why, you know, system releases and change and things like that takes so long in uh, an ERP world. And it, it, it is absolutely fascinating. I'm doing work with Wardley Maps, which I've never done before, which is uh, very interesting as well. And uh, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been an excellent one. What, you know, for me, you know, the, the, the sessions kick off at 3 p.m. for me and run through until about midnight. So the last uh, two or three days, it's been, you know, long days, you know, eight mm. morning through to, you know, midnight. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's been been fascinating. I think one of the one of the most interesting statements was that um, change in software doesn't scale, and what that means is the more you package into a, you know a software release exponentially, you know, it doesn't 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 make it easier to deploy the software. It actually makes the converse. It makes it harder to deploy the software. So when you talk about scale of you know scaling changes and things like that, making change smaller, more frequent is actually easier on the organization than a large, more complicated change. So I thought that was a very it was you know obviously we've known this for forever you know in the cold light of day, but it was just the fact the statement itself, the simplicity of the statement that scale you know software changes do not scale interesting mm. the 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 interesting thing is when you take that to its logical conclusion and you talk about these very large uh you know erp change programs and transformations maybe this is a nice sort of nice uh, covid19 uh, segue, we're blowing up your agenda to Brenton, but whatever. <laughs> and, <laughs> okay. Okay. Not my agenda, it's everyone's <laughs> agenda. No, no, I know. <laughs> no but, it's but, your agenda that we're derailing, don't worry. But, but, with, but the, you <laughs> know, the, the, the fact is, you know, if you guys have read a book called The Mythical Man Month, then great. If not, then you should. Actually, everybody should that's involved in software. Um, and the reality is that very large software products have a very high failure rate. It's not yeah. like construction, but you know, and the, the, the comedy is that the, the methodologies Prince2 and, and PMP, which you use for software products are actually construction um, project management frame, frameworks. And, and construction, you, you can do phenomenal, phenomenal pieces of construction, these skyscrapers in, in a quite, quite predictable way that the schedules and costs are, are pretty yeah. well known. And, and you transfer that to software and, and, and it just literally falls apart. And, and, and so what, what we seem to be seeing and we be, you know, we'll then move on to, to maybe SAP leadership conversation. We, we seem to be seeing that the, the S4 transformations are falling on, off a bit of a cliff right now because these are big, uh, the ones that are running are running. But um, other than that, there seems to be a move to say, hey, do we really want to be doing a big transformation to our core business right now when we could be investing in improving customer experience or digitizing supply chain or or whatever it is that's important. I mean, I, I joke about my local liquor store. So those guys, they had to shut all the liquor stores. <coughs> and the only place you can buy wine from in Pennsylvania is a state-run liquor store. Hmm. They had to shut them because of COVID-19. So they moved to an online delivery model, but then they realized they couldn't do direct drop. They can only ship to store. So they had to shut down the online store. Now, They've, they've reopened the stores with telephone and phone in delivery for curbside. They've got no online capability. Yeah. Now, where do you think they should be investing? Replacing a finance system? And by, the way, they, <laughs> they, and by the way, in some cases, they could be the same thing. And in this case, I think those projects go on. But if you, you know, you've, you've got a system which is supported at SAP until 2030 and it works and it isn't causing business pain. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, it's re we really seem to be seeing a drop off in those sorts of projects, which is fascinating. Yeah, no, it, it 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 is. I was reading a thing about you know the 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 meat supply chain. You know, to your point about actually changing systems and 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 you know the meat supply chain is fifty percent 
restaurants, McDonald's, you know, fast food, all that sort of stuff. Um, and in Ireland, obviously, all the McDonald's have closed. So the farmers and the, the, the wholesalers are left with the quandary. Do they, uh, supermarkets have stepped up and taken 50% of that 50% shortfall. So now, what is it, 75% of that meat is now going to supermarkets, but it is on a very ad hoc basis in terms of their IT capability. Do they rework? Do they deploy change in order to make that more formal and codified in their software systems? Or do they wait the three or four weeks expecting McDonald's and restaurants actually to reopen and return their supply chain to its normalcy? They, they can't cope with that speed. So, so, so I wrote an article on this yesterday because it's really interesting. So, so what you've described is a problem, but I don't think it's the problem with meat supply chain. So the problem with meat supply chain is that it, that it has not it has had relatively little robotic automation happen in the supply chain. And in the US, the meat supply chain is collapsing because the, the meat production plants uh, have are basically petri dishes for COVID-19 and they're shutting down one by one. And these, you know, you're talking about Smithfield Foods. These guys produce 25% of the, of the <coughs> country's bacon. And Is we that, love that, bacon. That, 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 that was on a, that, I was reading a thing the other day, actually, about that, uh, that one of their plants. Yeah, yeah, it shut down. Yeah. And I went, I went into Costco today, and now you can only buy one 25 pound bag of bacon at a time. Must protect the bacon that is, supply That's chain. the beginning of the end. <laughs> but, and, 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 and I'm joking, but it is. No, 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 no. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 25 pounds. You have 12, 12 kilos of bacon. Yeah, it's, it's, called, it's called a fry-up. That is, that is a substantial fry-up. So what do you do with it? Do you freeze the bacon or what do you do with it? Well, I don't eat meat, so you're, really, you're asking the wrong person. But um, <laughs> then why, you know, why are you buying 25 pounds of bacon? <laughs> okay. um, well, he doesn't sorry, I didn't this week, but I didn't this week, but I, I, I was remarking on the limitation. So you can All only right. buy one bag. Fair enough, fair enough. But, and he only however, buys it every other week. It's fine. However, I did, <laughs> I did buy it for my neighbor last week. Um, I did them a delivery of bacon, and they oh. told me when I met at the Madego that they had eaten mm. all the bacon. Yeah. There's I five, five adults in the house. Well, yeah. well as we always I, say, it's, it is part of the major food groups, let's face it. It is. It is. It's funny, actually. I've been, I, I, I've actually, uh, I know a lot of my neighbors, uh, but I have been doing, you know, food parcels and food yeah. deliveries mm. uh, as well. It's been, uh, it has been quite fascinating. I, I seem to somehow have, you know, become embroiled in the fabric of the small community I live in. Do I? It started so, with you, the, it started do you know with what's even even really? even more interesting with all this? And uh, so I lost attention there for a good two minutes because Zoom decided to minimize itself and then had a bug and wouldn't done minimize. So I stopped uh -huh. paying attention to the two E, and I do that for literally thirty <laughs> seconds, and the two E go off and discuss twenty five pounds worth bag bags worth of bacon. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> like I knew we would derail the agenda, but like that. <laughs> I was just interested you could even get 25 pounds. Well, not, you know. You I haven't know spent enough time in the US in that case. You can always get a bigger version of something in the US. Yeah, is, yeah fair enough. I mean, um, when, when you buy, when I buy brisket, I mean, they're, they're, they're a 12 pound slab of meat. Well, now that, that makes sense. If, so, if I want to go and buy lamb, it's in, in Costco, the, the lambs come frozen. Uh, yeah. I don't know how long, like 50 pounds, something like that. You have to have to haul it out of the freezer on your shoulder. <laughs> to be fair, I'm not, uh, it, it's not it's, lost to me, John, that I did send you a big picture of all the meat I received yesterday. Yeah. You know, yes, I saw so, that. Yeah, so um, uh, it was, it, to be fair, uh, some of the local butchers have started teaming up with um, local couriers and saying, yeah. look, if I sell this, can you deliver it? And so we said, hell, you know, let's, let's support local. Um, so I think we paid like 40 or 50 bucks and we got a ridiculous amount of meat. Bucks. Bucks. Um, yeah, bucks. euros, uh, Irish, Irish bucks, Irish bucks, <laughs> Irish dollar pounds. I will trade you two lambs and a chicken. But so, um, but but this I, links I, interestingly to the SAP leadership point, right? That you you wanted to yeah. talk about. Oh, I can't um, wait to see how you make this segue work. <laughs> no, it does because because the, you know we're seeing down a, we're seeing a slowdown in in the ERP, in the ERP projects that haven't started yet. 
And that, that could change again. But actually, my theory is that it, that it won't change quickly because, you know, when, you, when we talk about the meat processing I just talked about, you know, Smithfield Foods needs to be thinking about how do I automate the processing of meat with robotics? And, and because yep. it's part of the critical infrastructure of the company, uh, the, the company, the country. Well, even if you if you look back at it, I mean, I'm sure companies will be doing retrospectives on all of this when eventually we do get out the other side. Mm. And you look at it and say, we could have been operating if we'd invested, if we made this fairly done insignificant investment and look how much money we lost, it becomes uh, a no-brainer. And there are reasons why they haven't because they're, sure. they're supporting a large amount of employment. But we're mm. now talking about people not being able to eat mm. versus automation. Right. So, so I think that there is going to be a real uh, macro challenge in upgrading ERP systems, which which function versus doing digital transformation around the edges. Um, yeah. And you've got companies like 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 Tom Siebel's company C3, for example, which which could be offering really interesting edge programs of work. Mm. And that kind of moves yeah. us on to, to to the leadership changes at SAP. And you know, th th there's there's no there's long, of course, been no no love lost between the Germans and the Americans, um, but I, I think um, it was time for them to have a faster and more agile organization that can can think about how do we remain relevant when S4 yeah. might be a much longer game than we thought it was going to be. And mm -hmm. they, they extended the S4 timeline from 2025 to 2030. I know people mm -hmm. say 27, 27, but who cares? It's extended maintenance. The, the reality is that with COVID-19, that means that people can put off that project for 10 years and still be okay because they can pay for customer specific maintenance if they want to. I thought you were yeah. drinking like a blue Curacao milk drink. No, it's just my drink. It's just beer. Yeah. No. <laughs> what <laughs> I've been over this. I, uh, this is kind of an orange squash thing. Concentrate. All right. All right. Well, it yeah. could be anything. You wouldn't know the difference. Yep. It just depends if you want to lie to me or not. But yeah, to your point, John, yes, they, 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 they can put it off for a, a a much longer period of time than they could do previously. Yeah, yeah. And for you, for you guys, of course, the question is, can you, uh, you know, what do you replace that with, right? And, mm. it's, and yeah. you've got the same thing. But I, I, think, um, I think SAP, you know, did what they have to do to consolidate leadership and move more quickly. You know, I, I know, I know Christian and he, he's a guy that once he has the, the information to make decisions. He makes the difficult decisions and he moves quickly. Um, and I think the SAP is going to have a really tough year. So good, good for them. Yeah. It, it, it was, it was a surprise and it's not a surprise. You know, the, the, I got lots of people saying, you know, that, uh, the, you know, the co-CEO thing is, is, you know, it, it worked before. Why did it work this time? And all the rest of it. I think, you know, it's a, it's a different company. It's, it's in a different, it's a different company in a different place than it was when it was, you know, But I mean, uh, also that they're operating in a different environment, let's face it. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, be, having a, an organization that's decisive, as, as you said, John, um, I think is, is key to that. And if you have to go to two sides of a business to get approvals, to do stuff, it, I think I read some of the articles that were, you know, speculating on what happened and, you know, speculation is speculation, but at the same time, you can kind of, relate to the fact that you know if you if you've two um people leading and, and you have to get approval from two different people just to do something it, it can be a bit of a challenge um i'm trying to think of the movie quote there um uh, oh yeah from from the u.s office um where would catholicism be without the popes um is, is one of the quotes from the u.s office um so you know quite interesting but chris not, not surprising um, sorry, I just forgot, I forgot my question. I, had, uh, I was going to pick up on something Chris said. Um, oh, yeah. So, so when do you think this COSIO model worked? Uh, it was whenever the Jim Schnabe and Bill McDermott. So you thought Schnabe and McDermott? Because I would argue that it worked with, with Platner and uh, Kargerman. Yeah. And and sort of worked from Cargaman to Apoteka. Um, Ooh, but Apoteka I would, was the. I would, I would challenge that one. Well, the problem was that Leo was the wrong person for the business at that time. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So, but there was that wasn't an issue with the co-CEO model so much as an issue that 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 was the wrong person. And then and then you yeah, have this. But, 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 but you can't have a co-CEO model if you've got the wrong person. Then the model itself is fundamentally flawed. 
you know, the, the model only works when you have both the right people doing that 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 bit so okay. yes so in that but, in that case it didn't work in the case of mcdermott and schnabel i think it worked because they both they they they, they took different different sides of the house maybe <laughs> ah you disagree with me i just think that they they were they were too very professional guys that held it together until they didn't. I give you that one a hundred percent. That 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 they you know they are two very 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 different people. But they're just two two very professional guys that that yeah. um, that in in public did a, a really good job of of showing unified. Yeah, uh, it'd be interesting to see where Jen ends up. Um, I'm sure that will become uh, news whenever it happens, but it'll be interesting to see where she, see where she ends up. I mean, all, all I can tell you from that on is, you know, the, the analysts love Jen. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And actually, a lot of people in SAP America love Jen. Um, it's, been, it's been surprising to me to see the outpouring of grief, in fact. Um, and, and I think it's something that concerns, you know, the, the people in HQ, well, mm-hmm. um, it would. I, I was I was actually surprised, um, not for any particular reason. It's just always interesting when you see that outpouring of grief more than when Bill left, to be honest. Mm. And so, um, you know, she she's actually probably in a really nice place right now from 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 a perspective of what her potential is. I think she's going to have a choice of a lot of really interesting roles. So, good yeah. for her. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Um, Cool. What what else was on our, our list? Well, actually, I just want to go back to something John said. Yeah, yeah. I I'd met Jen like three times, and she, what struck me two things struck me was that super 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 smart, mm-hmm. ridiculously smart and quick, but really genuine as well. Yeah, and that that was something that the the. That, that really struck me and uh, and and uh, I really uh, I really liked so I, I can understand why there is that outpouring uh, of sentiment so yeah sorry Brent mm. no it's all right it's all right you you two will continue to derail the 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 list of things we were going to talk about so it's absolutely fine <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that's the way it should be. Um, well, well, let's let's not at all segue. And Chris, you yeah. wanted to talk about um, parenting and COVID nineteen. I've just come out of my Montessori class, but you go first. You were being taught as a Montessori pupil. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, actually, that's that's in the parent child classes. That's exactly how it works. Yeah. Fabulous, so. fabulous. Um, no, I just I I I find it interesting because. You know, so many, like, I, 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 you know, I, I've been working from home since I, I took on this role. Um, the, the commute across the office for me is like 90 minutes. So I tried it uh, one way. Uh, so I try to do it as little as possible. But, um, you know, the, because the kids aren't in school anymore, um, you know, conference calls are considerably more amusing when they're video on. Um but also just the challenge of getting getting work done. You know, it is it 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 is genuinely a challenge, especially you know if I'm very deep in a very particular problem. Uh, you know, having the kids run around is just oh, it can be really really challenging. You know, it goes back to it goes back to that old um, I'm I'm gonna stick it out. There's a great article called the co- the the true cost of interruptions. Yeah, um, uh, Matthew, no, <laughs> Matthew. Yeah, you see, this happens. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sorry. Matthew, come on. Come on. Come on. We'll be right back after this commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> on, on the bright side, we are getting a couple of comments in, John, which is apparently your study looks like a uh, green screen. Or, or so the commenters have are, are, are saying. Do mine or you? <laughs> and, and by commenters, I mean DJ. <laughs> So, so we've moved from from pale, uh, and um, to just. I'll have it later. Just in case there was confusion. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's one. Thank you. And that's when you quickly turned back How the other way because you, 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 you realized board. you stuff on your whiteboard. <laughs> uh, How do you get, yeah, there's, How do you get your whiteboard? You're, you're conscious in the way. 
Uh, I sit on the couch and lean back to it. Uh, it's not a perfect situation. Anyway, here is the uh, come back. And and here are you guys. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Oh, you don't. You're not using gallery view. I always use gallery view. I am. I am just just so you're, you're aware when when you do when either of you do stop paying attention, that's when I switch to gallery view on the stream, so, so that you, people can see that you're not paying attention. Just just so you know. <laughs> yes, not not a not a green screen. Yeah, I normally use gallery view, but with three people, it's kind of annoying. With the, with the when it's not. Uh, apparently, you have not solved your pale issue as well, according to our other commenters. Oh really? I thought we'd actually. Yeah. So so I have solved the laptop issue. Um, well, so it wasn't a laptop, was it? Well, we, part of it was the laptop. So the the pale thing was a laptop issue. The oh. screen problem wasn't a laptop issue. Hopefully, does that makes people a little happy? I've changed the white balance a touch. Ooh, nice. Um, yeah. We can. Yeah. We can so go. so it, anyway. It's, you know, it actually get, getting getting a reasonable level of work done during the day. With the kids around, is you know can be a challenge. For well, I, I, I find I found that I've had to kind of adjust when I work. So I work early in the morning. I work during yeah. the day, kind of in the middle of the day, and yeah. then I work after he's gone to bed and after I've had a bit of dinner. Like I, I worked till about eleven o'clock last night, but that's fine. Yeah. You know, I'm, but I'm taking breaks during the day to like take him out, to take my son out to for a walk, um, and just get him out of the house for a bit because I think that's yeah. it, important. It, I, I've I've done the same thing. My actual. Yeah, you know, the 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 hours in which I would do work have expanded, mm. in so that I can make sure that I get as you know sort of roughly the same level of work accomplished. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just seeing other comments coming in. There's lots of comments about uh, John's whiteboard positioning. Yeah, uh, they don't like my whiteboard position. I like it where it is. It's the only <laughs> place for it. So, uh, at least for the minute. So, so, um, but but the thing I I actually like this. Um, so there's a human aspect, and that's why I didn't appreciate when DJ said that he thought there was a green screen. Um, so, so there's a human aspect into letting people into your into your lives and and to see what's yeah. going on. I mean, for instance, I didn't know Chris. It looks like you're somewhat musical. I see the corner of a keyboard. Can uh, you play chopsticks? So, yeah, well, <laughs> both both Anna and I are learning the piano. So she has lessons, and and you know, I work with her on her. Um, you know, on her practicing. So I used to play the piano uh, quite a lot when I was younger. So I did. So um, and, and the challenge is, the piano is actually in the in the way of my whiteboard. <laughs> Which is why when I saw yours, I went, ah, he has the same problem I do. Um, I, I do not have this problem. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, although having said that, since the kids have been home, I see my whiteboard is actually full of uh, pictures we'll do this, uh, yeah. that the kids have, have done. And well, it's, be it's better than the, the, the suggestion that was given to me this week is that I should draw a speech bubble on my whiteboard <laughs> so that when I sit down, it looks like I'm saying something. I um, <laughs> haven't quite gone that far yet. <laughs> no, it's not a speech bubble. It's more of a thought bubble so we know that you can exactly. think. Exactly. Yeah, I am thinking. But, uh, um, but my point is, anyway, you, you, there's a human aspect to letting somebody into your home. Hmm. And, you know, I, I try to let Alexander come in when it, you know whenever um, I can have the door shut now so it's not too distracting from recording but if he comes in especially in internal meetings and sits with me for a little while that's yeah. cool and I don't want him to think that the the you know when I'm working and working and like you know mustn't disturb me. yeah yeah yes like the, no, the old school way of doing it. and actually so that the last for the last couple of recordings people would have, if they've watched a few of them they would have noticed that my setup would have been very different because I actually reversed my desk for this very reason um, mine was more to do with the fact that toddlers like to pull at wires. Um, yeah. So I needed to put together a, a, an office setup that was safer um, yeah. and not having wires exposed to the back of, the, of, the, of the, the desk, which is what had previously been there. So that's why I've made this change. Um, well, good and for yeah, bad. So, so I want to go back to actually something that John said was actually yeah. quite not disturbing dad. And, and this is the thing. So the, and, and the two of you will actually come across this later um, is... Yeah, they, 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 Anna will come in and want to actually to talk to me to tell me something. Mm -hmm. But the difficulty is, is that you know, she will actually come in and speak to me when I'm actually physically talking to somebody and cut across. And therefore, on the one hand, I have to, uh, you know, it's, it's bad manners. You know, it's not even the fact that 
I don't want to be interrupted because I'm working when I'm saying I'm actually on a phone call at the moment. It's not, you know, it's not that work is more important than her. It's the manners aspect of it. Mm -hmm. But yeah. at the same, you know, and that's, you know, which is different for a six-year-old than it is for a four-year-old. Okay. Because, you know, at, 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 at that age, you're trying to, um, you're trying to, to, to reinforce, you know, good manners, manners and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And all that sort of stuff. And that's, that's, that, that, that's actually turning out to be quite, quite a large challenge, especially because I'm at home and I'm working longer hours you know, or what they see as longer, longer hours. Because mm -hmm. so um, when I am talking to her to explain, you know, the dynamics of the interaction, because that's really important as well. I'm always at pains to say, this is not about the fact that it's work. It's the fact that you walked in and basically, <laughs> you know, shouted over me when I'm trying to tell my boss something. Uh, and, and, and that's, that, that's interesting. Mm. So it is and difficult. It's also so, so part of humanity, right? And, and yeah. something that we all have to be a little bit more patient about, about than we were in the past. Yeah. Um, Completely agree. That, that sort of is what it is. And, and there's another side to it, right? Which is especially with this working from home situation, you know, mm -hmm. we've got to make sure we have our family time. <laughs> and I, yeah. I try and stop at five. Um, I don't know if Lena was watching. Which time she, zone? Eastern. So I just, <laughs> five. I'm done now. It's five <laughs> British time. It's time for a beer. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, 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 try and, I try and finish at five Eastern and I start to cook. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Alexander is in bed, um, you know, for, for nine. He's a late, goes to bed late. Uh, or, or, and then if I need to get back to work, I get back to work. Or, you, mm -hmm. you know, oft, often do, you know, do some more emails, do some some content creation or whatever needs to be done. Yeah. Um, you, you know, and, 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 you know, then you have the quality time. And I think that we're really, you know, those of us are lucky enough to, to have a job that we can work remotely and continue to do. Um, yeah. So, so we are, um, you know, we should be thankful of this time that we have at home with our family that we've never had before. Yeah. Yeah. And, completely agree. And it, it, you know, we will be going back to the travel thing at some point. Yes. Not yes. to the same degree, maybe, but it'll come back. Yeah. Not, not, no, not no. for a little while, but it, but it will come back. You're, you're absolutely right. And, and, you know, from my perspective, I can definitely say that, um, like I was planning on not really traveling, april may anyway because obviously we have a new one on the way yeah. and and i i value my you know life <laughs> but it, it what what has been very nice i think is the, at least for my wife is the is the thought that and for me uh, is the thought that beyond the, the new baby being born it's not likely i'm going to be properly back traveling in the way that i was um for several months which you know is very nice um mm. so you know we've had this time with with our with our first our firstborn uh, for the last few months with with both of us home the whole time and also now we're going to get as well when the new one's born which is quite nice so yeah good timing from my perspective yeah yeah no it, it, it's i i remember the year that i spent at sap and, and the predominance of that was working from home so it was and um, <clears throat> you know having that time with anna was just amazing yeah mm -hmm. it wasn't the right rule and, and and there were many challenges there but having that having that time is just absolutely phenomenal and then you know, obviously the time with the, the twins um, over the last you know four years has been absolutely phenomenal as well. So, yeah, but I, I, I have to say, actually, getting back out in the road, even just in a reduced sense, is uh, something I'm looking forward to. So it is, you know, because we, you know, we all do well, you know, the, you know, we're good in front of customers. We like being in front of customers. We like having interesting conversations and, you know, being face to face. <laughs> The thing that that bothers me is that for every day that we sit here, um, we hire another person that I've never met in person. Mm. Yeah, and you know, there's a human aspect to business, and there is. I, I, it's something I don't like. There's we, nothing. There's nothing better than actually sitting down, is, sharing a beer, sharing a meal, looking at someone in the eye, and and yeah. getting a feel for them in person. Your apps. I could. I could not agree more. Yeah. Um, because that's where gut feels come from as to whether someone will work or not. Um, 
So it's, 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 to me, it's not that. So I'm, I'm convinced that we can hire great people remotely. In fact, the track record is, is phenomenal because you can still you can still drill in and find out. But it's actually then building a relationship with them like this. It's hard. Mm. Yeah, it is. It is. Because the, the, the conversations tend to be transactional, not uh, explore, um, you know, your meeting tends to have a point and you don't kind of deviate from that point. You know, your relationship is based around the other incidental pieces of information you find out about a person that create the connection. And you have to try to separate those. And so, so one trick yeah. to anyone <clears throat> watching is, you know, so, so I have, you know, group meetings that are about, that are typically about the topic of the group, you know, be it a region or be, be it a, be it a product management or be it IT or whatever it is. And then, you know, you have one-on-ones where you try to make sure that you, you return, retain a kind of human element yeah. and you find out about the person. Um, it's not a perfect system, but um, it does it does help. And by the way, those one-on-ones don't need to be very often. I've actually reduced the frequency of all my one-on-ones following this COVID thing. So yeah. I've got kind of regular ones, half an hour every two weeks with people. Mm. Um, so it's actually not about the frequency, it's about doing it. Yeah. 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 It's, it's interesting. Like in terms of one-on-ones, like I'm usually pretty I stay in reasonable touch with, you know, the the people the people that I am sort of in my management sphere, if you will. Like, at the moment I'm not managing anybody, but you know, the, you know, my project manager and my you know line manager I'm usually in pretty frequent contact with so you know, one-on-ones for me they are useful but i don't need them with any great regularity yeah they don't need to be too regular no but then when you do do them it's it, it, you know if you can get into that human aspect i think it's important yeah and i, I think I, that if you, if you try to do that human aspect and have a frequency that is too high it becomes forced hmm. And then, but also it you seem become genuine. transactional again because you want to talk about the details. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's it's so so that actually leads us on to another one. You know, we've all we have all taken on different roles to what we have been used to. You've sort of touched on a little bit of, I suppose, actually, John, your role itself, you know, within Avantra is 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 probably the closest to. to it's the next sort of evolution of, of what you've been doing. Um, but I've taken on effectively a product role um, in building and expanding out the platform that we're working on at the moment. And then friends, and me, you've taken on what the customer success role. Mm. You know, yep. So, uh, you know, how, especially in these times, you know, actually adapting to those new rules, you know, what, what are we, what have we found that works? What have we, you know, what strategies have we done, you know, to enable that we are as effective as we can be in those roles? You know, I've effectively joined a brand new company and then about, you know, a couple of weeks, you know, about six weeks in, went into lockdown. Well, that's yeah, the case so, for all of us, really. Yeah. Yeah. So... I, yeah, I, from a timing perspective, we were all, you know, some of us were a little bit ahead of others, but realistically, I mean, mm-hmm. what, uh, what was I? I was five months into this role, I suppose, when we went into lockdown. Yeah. So, you know, big part of customer success is guess what? Talking to customers and going talking to customers and that kind of stuff. I, I suppose for me, the big change has probably been taking that very, what is a personal um, engagement with those customers and turning it into a digital experience and trying to do that in a way that still allows the customer to open up to it about feedback about us and all that kind of stuff and what they want to see in the product, which is some of the stuff that that I'm working on. And how do you do that in a digital sphere? Um, I'm not, you know, we still had very great success um, with those, the the customer experience, customer success sessions um, Mm -hmm. with customers. But obviously that stuff is much easier done in person. Um, yeah. so, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's still working though, which, which, which is good. Yeah. Um, and learning to deal with that and, and to, 
um, learning to encourage customers and people to be um, open about w- their feedback in qu- what is what has traditionally been a very formal thing about being on camera and being in a meeting yes doing that and getting the, st- the same feedback that you're looking for um, yeah. and insight that you're looking for but in a digital setting it's been an interesting challenge um, you just got to ask the difficult questions yeah you know how are we doing yes like you've got to start with that like what do you th- you got to make them open how are we doing you know you make them open you ask the difficult questions they come to the table they do and, and but not not only that but you ask the difficult questions then you stop and wait let them think about it, um, mm. you know, um, because, you know, people that they're, they're big questions and people need time to think about them. And, you know, attend, especially Irish people. And Chris, I know you'll, you'll agree with this. We have a tendency to fill silences. Um, you know, don't we just know talk. <laughs> no, not I, at all. I don't know what you mean. I debated with being quiet there and I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> yeah, you tried, you failed. Um, but yeah, that, that's just one of those things. How about you, John? Yeah. Do you know who was fantastic at that? Michael Eldridge. He oh, used yeah. silence like nobody I've ever seen. Except maybe John. Now he's, re- <laughs> now he's refusing to speak. <laughs> <laughs> to Brenton. <laughs> um, but so, so in, in the role that I'm doing, you know, the... It's, it's not very different apart from the fact that you're not spending as time, much time in front of people. Mm. You know, the, the, the issues that a CEO, you know, has to deal with, how do I grow the business? How do I bring n- new customers into the business? How do I ensure that we're building the right product? How do I sh- ensure that we're building the product right? How do I ensure that our customers are well-served and happy? How, how do I understand? How do I ensure that they're heard? Um, how do I ensure that we have a great culture that people want to come and work for, and we have an employer's brand? How do I ensure that um, the people um, are, are satisfied and happy? Um, I don't know. Probably, I probably missed a few things, but th- these are all the same questions that you have to ask every day. You know, how do I ensure that people are accountable for what they are that they ought to be doing, and they know what they're accountable for, mm. and they're empowered. Um, the, these are the same, they're exactly the same issues, remote or not. Um, it, it's. Yeah. You know. So it, it, you, what, I think what you're saying is that it, really speaking, it hasn't changed massively what, what you would do day in, day out. But for Chris, I think you're saying you, it, it has changed quite a bit for you. Yes, it has. It, it's changed massively for me because I've gone from, uh, consulting um, to uh, you know the the, the you know, leading the, the the technical practice at Mindtree to effectively what is a product role. So you know the, the amount of reading and, and studying I've had to do on uh, you know product management and, and development has just been phenomenal. So it has. So it's uh, it has been extremely interesting, and, and and even just you know, for example, the concept of technical debt. You know, we we talked about it when you know, before the show. Uh, you know, I don't think of it. Uh, I've I I realized how easy you it now is. own the debt. <laughs> yes, I, I well, yeah, I I I'm I am heavily involved in repaying the debt. But I, I was about no, to say, so it, you're no it, longer creating the debt. You now own no, it. No, 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 no. I was going to say, I <laughs> creating it. I, I, I'm, I'm, I am neck deep in creating it, and believe me, the, the speed at which you can create it is phenomenal. So it is, but when you're building, you know. You know, going from um, you know when we're building functionality, going from you know what is a functional minimum viable product for a component within the platform, out to what is a bit more fully formed. Oh, dreadful! Sorry. Um, it, yeah, yeah it's life. <laughs> hey, Chris, yeah. I got a question here, and I, I don't know if we're getting, if we're delving too deep, but do you, you, you know, I I know as a, as a product company we don't really know how to do services. Do you think that services companies can build product? You see, we have had this debate before, John. And um, um, it's <laughs> the... They can. 
when they understand the level of investment that's needed in order to do it, yes. When it is as well as things, then no. Give me. Can you, can you think of a good example? He's going to close the door. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of a good example of a services company that built a great, great product. And I could think, I'm thinking maybe if you think into the telecommunications industry, like, um, you know, I, th I think um, the, the Verizon, there's, there's, they, you know, but the telecommunications are not services. I'm thinking about those TV um, yeah. interfaces. But I'm just trying to think of like a tech services company that's created great product. Well, no. So, so, so the thing about it is, I think, I think you're you're latching onto the idea of product more than anything else. At the end of the day, it you know what I'm building is is a platform, right, for delivering services. Okay. So, but you have to treat the build of the platform like a product. Yes. And because I suppose my, my assumption there, uh, and it's based upon my experience, which was, you know, so you want to do this, right? We've got this great idea. Now yeah. we're going to assign people to do it, but we, we, we never understand what's required to both design, build, test, and document yeah. um, real software. Yeah. No, completely. I'm, I'm, and then I'm, there's, all, there's also the fact that customers get in the way, you know, customer... It, projects and customer initiatives get in the way. Well, but I think that Chris is actually in a better position than that, right? Because mm -hmm. when, when we tried doing it in the Bluefin days, right, you, you're scraping off the barrel of the bench. Yes, um, exactly. Yeah, I think, he's, you know, you guys are in a better situation than that. <laughs> I, I do want to jump in with a couple of points, though, um, mm. not necessarily just from this, because I'm conscious we do have a hard stop soon, so I want to get these points in. Um, mm. Just from commenters, the first one was um, the, uh, going back to the one-on-ones. And um, it's a good point, but actually scheduled one-on-ones are pretty useless. Ad hoc one-on-ones can be far better if you're actually looking to gain insight into the person and actually you, you're, you're interested in their day-to-day -day lives it, because the scheduled ones are a little bit more formal. That's one comment. Oh, I'm going to respond to that, which is yeah. it, it, it's a nice story in theory. In, in, in reality, for, for a lot of business leaders, they have to force themselves to put time aside and so scheduling them whilst perhaps not as, as personal and fluid as the pick up the phone, how you doing, mate, um, <laughs> does make sure that the conversation at least happens. Mm -hmm. Yep. Chris, any thoughts uh, before I go to the second point? No, no, I'm happy enough. Cool. That one. And then, uh, so this one is from, um, from last week's DJ, Crooked. Um, <laughs> Um, so lockdown for new employees may, be, may bring about a reduction in self-confidence because typically the feedback cycles can be hindered, which I thought was an interesting point. Schedule regular, schedule, period, schedule periodic one on ones to make sure people get feedback. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, so easy, we, easy answer, but I thought it was a good point though, because if, you, if you're not thinking about how you, how you deliver that feedback that would have been traditionally delivered face to face and, and make a conscious oh. effort to make sure it's captured it's like got to be so, conscious so here, here's the thing it actually, it actually uh think of it this way if you were introverted it actually makes it easier for you to hide as well because you know you would you wouldn't have you you wouldn't go out to seek those that feedback those one-on-one -on -one sessions and things like that so it actually can help um you know those people who who wouldn't be comfortable in a feedback cycle mm. to, to hide more easily. But again, to, to John's point, you know, as a leader, you, 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 you get that time in the diary and you make sure it happens. Yeah, you've got to do it. That's the only thing that you can do. You've got to actually make sure you do it. Yep. Awesome. So I know we have a hard stop very shortly. So I want to thank you for coming on, Chris. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, thank um, you for having me. And no problem. I hope the agenda. <laughs> That's all right. Do you know what? I have to, have the time to put the, together these agendas and just move to the next week. It'll never get done <laughs> ever. So it's fine. Um, Sounds like meetings with you, Brenton. Never yeah. happens. <laughs> never happens. You mean meetings with you? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, guys, listen. Have a great weekend and a great Thank rest you of your much. Friday. I'm off to order some pizza for the family, which I'm looking forward to doing. Stop and um, I'll catch you all later. Thanks again, Chris. Thanks, John. Thanks, Thanks guys. Folks. Talk Thank to you, you again soon. Have a great weekend.